Beth with Thimble Hooks. Thanks for stopping by. Today's project is one that I told you about a couple weeks ago when I showed you how to do a stacked single crochet instead of the double crochet, turn, chain, ick, those icky parts that I don't like. Remember that? Here's the bag that I promised. It is my version of that really awesome Prada tote that came out. It's been inspired by that. It's not exactly the same, but it's so darn close. This one I did in cotton. This one is in a tape yarn. I have many options here for you because not everybody can find raffia. It's a raffia bag and it's kind of difficult to work with. I'm going to show you right now the difference between some of these really quick before we get started. So here's straight out raffia. It's very thin this way, but it's very wide. It does fight back a little bit, has mind of its own. Got this on Amazon. I got a three pack, I think for like $8 and you would need two of these little balls in order to make this. You'll need at least 350 yards. I would go higher than that because I made my green one out of Yarn B Cotton It Lean, but this is 180 yards. I had two of these and this is all I have left after making the entire bag. Push towards 400 yards of your chosen yarn. All of these are using the same hooks. So in here I used sugar and cream, which is a beautiful cotton, fun to work with, and it's a four weight. So there's my pink, and now here's the sugar and cream. Same hook, but you see this one stretches a little bit more than the raffia, because the raffia doesn't have nearly as much gain. If you wanted to use raffia and you're kind of new to this, I would suggest this product. This is Lion Brand Rewind. It's a tape yarn, so it's very similar, so you can see, to the raffia. Very thin, but it's wide and it holds up as nicely with wanting to keep its shape, but it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna use this one, but I wanted to show you the differences. So let's get started. All right, so there's two different options for the way that you'd like to start this bag. You can start out with two rows of single crochet right here, like I did here, and like I did here, or you can just jump right in to your mesh. You'll need a five millimeter hook and a four millimeter hook, so five, and a four. Make the back panel first, then you'll have a good practice on how to make this mesh. And then we are going to chain 52. 52. Make a nice chain of 52. All right, so ours are chain of 52, and in the very first stitch, the very first change that you can work in, whether you work into the chain like this or into the back bump like this, we want to do a stack single crochet. So remember that was go in, yarn over, pull through, make a single crochet, and then we want to go underneath the little loop that we just made that's furthest away from your hook and do another single crochet. I made that chain a little bit tight, oh no. But there is a stacked single crochet so we don't have to use a chain three turn. I just don't like those, I think they look icky. So now we're going to chain one, so we're making this mesh, we're going to chain one, and now we can do regular old double crochets. Skip one chain and go into the next one. And chain one, skip one chain, go into the next with the double crochet. Chain one, Skip the next, go in, and complete a normal double crochet. And you do that all the way down, you'll end up with 25 little open mesh squares. So I will meet you as soon as I get down to the end. Alright, and here is my last one. I did my chain, and I skip one, and here's my very last chain. That one's always a little tricky. There we go. There's my very last chain. There's my last double crochet. There, so now we have 25 little mesh squares. Now we want to do the next row up, but we are using on the edges and always going to use a stacked single crochet. So you just turn your work, don't chain, just turn your work. Go into your first stitch, yarn over, do a single crochet and a stacked. So we're going to go into that back bump right there and do another single crochet. 
So now we have a nice tall stack of two single crochets so we don't ever have to work into the chain, which is one of my favorites. Chain one and work double crochets into the top of each previous from the previous row. Super easy mesh stitch. Couldn't be a lot easier than double crochet, chain, and skip. Not a lot easier than that. You could very easy to count your stitches and everything. So we're going to keep doing that. Do 25 rows will give you the back panel of your bag. It doesn't have the logo or anything on it. Just 25 rows of our beautiful mesh and finish off, set it aside, and we'll come back to that one in a smidge. You do all of that for 25 rows for your back panel, but for your front panel, we're going to stop at five rows. So technically we are working upside down on this bag right here. We are going to be working right here. So I've done these five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to start on this part right here, which is super, super easy. I promise. And then I just started the next one. I just have a few pieces right here. Three. One, two, three. And I'm going to leave this attached. Since you're going to have two balls of this, get out the other ball right now and start on our logo. But I want to use my four millimeter hook to do the triangle part right here to make these stitches nice and tight. So we're going to go into the fifth double crochet over or have four, one, two, three, four, four complete squares right here, one, two, three, four, and we're going to go in here and attach our yarn, attach our new yarn. And in that same space, We'll put in a single crochet. And now in the chain space right next to it, single crochet. In the double crochet next to that, single crochet. We're going to do 35 single crochets. There's number four in chain space. There's number five in the double crochet. There's number six and all the way to 35. 34 and 35. So now you can see I have one, two, three, four squares here, one, two, three, four squares here, and 35 single crochets in the center. So that was our first row of our triangle, and we're going to chain one turn our work and do the same thing again, 35 single crochets. One in each single all the way down. We just have a couple of stitches left Hooray. on this second row. And there's my last stitch in that second row of 35. So we just worked right here. Now to make our triangle start to decrease, we're going to chain one, turn our work, keep that other ball still connected but out of the way. And in our very first space right here, we're going to do a slip stitch. In the second one is a slip stitch. And in the third one is a slip stitch. So we have three slip stitches right in here. Now we're going to chain one and work into the same place that we just did our third slip stitch with a single crochet. So right there, we've just reduced by two right here. Now we want to do 31 single crochets all the way down. We are to reduce by two on this side and on this side. So now we're doing from 35 to 31. So there's one, two, three, all the way down. And here's number 31. And you can see right here we're going to leave these last two unworked. So we have two on this side that we did a slip stitch so they're not being worked and two on this side. And I like to put a marker, especially if you're new to this. I'm going to put a marker on this side right over here and that tells me this is the side that I need to do my slip stitches on. So right now we're going to do our second row of 31. So chain one, turn our work and do 31 single crochets all the way down. I told you this was 29, 
and 30 and there's 31 that was our last stitch which was our first stitch from the previous row and there's our two slip stitches still unworked so now we get to do the next row we're going to reduce by two on each side again so we are going to chain one turn our work and do our slip stitches again slip stitch in the first one there's a slip and in the second there's a slip and in the third there's a slip now in that same third one chain one and do a single crochet now we're reducing two more on each side which would take us to 27 so we're going to single crochet 27 across 26 and 27 so again two on this end not being worked and since our marker is down here we don't do our any slip stitches on this side we're just going to chain one turn our work and go all the way down with 27 single crochets again two three 25 26 and 27 and there's our slip stitches we are not working those so now see we're starting to decrease and we're going to come to a point right in here we're right here right now so on this side since that's where our marker is now we want to chain one and turn our work and do our three slip stitches one two and three and in that third stitch where we just did that slip stitch we want to chain one and single crochet so now we're reducing two on either side again we are going to reduce down to 23 single crochets on this line one, two all the way down to the end three 21 22 and 23 again two not worked on this side and now we've reduced down to 23 we're going to chain one turn our work and do 23 more single crochets 20 21 22 and 23 leaving two unworked and those are our slip stitches from before now we're on this side again chain one turn our work and do some slip stitches and let's reduce from 23 down one more time we're going to slip stitch one slip stitch two and slip stitch three and chain one and in that same space single crochet and 18 and 19 so again two unworked on this end two slip stitches on this end so now we have 19 chain one turn your work and do 19 single crochets all the way down 18 and 19 there we go triangles getting smaller and smaller almost to the point this is our slip stitch side so we're going to chain one turn our work slip stitch once slip stitch twice slip stitch three times to reduce by two on this side chain one and now we're single crochet 15 one, two, 14 and 15 leaving two one worked on this side we going to do another row of 15 so we're going to chain one turn our work and do 15 single crochets back down the 15 that we just did There's 13 and 14 and number 15 and now this is the side we do our slip stitches on because that's where my stitch marker is so we're going to chain one turn our work and reduce one more time so with that we do a slip stitch times one slip stitch times two and slip stitch times three reducing two so we're going to work into this stitch the chain one and then start our single crochets we'll reduce a total of four more two on either side so we are going down to 11 and two and 11 leaving two on worked on this side 11 in the center and two slip stitches on that side chain one turn our work and do 11 single crochets again 9 10 and
and 11. Now this is our slip stitch side. Chain one and reduce again. So we want to slip stitch once, slip stitch twice, slip stitch three times, and in that third one we're still going to work. So chain one and single crochet. This time we're going to reduce down to seven. Two, three, and seven, leaving two unworked on this side. Chain one, turn our work, and do our seven again. One and seven. And this will be our last pass. So this is our reducing row. Chain one, turn our work, and do our three slip stitches. There's one, two, and three. Chain one, and in that same place we want to do a single crochet. And we're reducing again, so we're going to only do three. One, two, and three, leaving these two unworked. Chain one, turn our work, do three single crochets, and our triangle is complete. There we go. We can finish this one off now if you want. We want to work to the sides here and fill all this in. This is probably the trickiest part, but I've tried really hard to make it as easy as possible super easy. Now this is a part where you can choose because it is a little tricky working into some of these stitches so you can stay with your four millimeter if you made your stitches too tight it's okay or you can move up to your five. I'll move up to my five and let's see how tight I made my stitches. Or you can alternate back and forth. I will show you that. So now here's our five rows one two three four five and our triangle and now we're just going to continue on with our original mesh. After our chain one, we're going to turn this into a square by working into our first slip stitch with another slip stitch. So now we've just closed that up and made our mesh square. Super easy. Now this is the fun part. So we need to make a square right here, but we need to be working right here. We can't have our yarn end up over here, so here's the trick. We need to make chain two. So now we need to close this square. What we're going to do is do a double crochet from this point right here, over here, to our first slip stitch on the next layer up. So we go yarn over, pull through. And yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Now we're back. We made our square and we're back to where we really need to start working. Chain one, turn our work. And now we just get to keep making mesh. Double crochet, chain one. Skip the chain space. Double crochet, chain one, skip the chain space. Double crochet, chain one, and now we get to work into a real stitch right over here with our stacked single crochets so we don't have to work into the chains. I'm so happy about that. And there we go. I'll change off to my five and see if I did this one a little bit looser. So we're just going to turn our work. Remember, we do not chain one when we're doing a stacked. Stacked single crochets is a substitution for a double crochet. So we're going to do a single crochet there and go in front and under the, the furthest one away and single crochet one more time. Now they're stacked on each other and they're skinny. No chains to work in. Chain one, double crochet on top of the previous double crochet. Chain one, skip the chain space, double crochet. Chain one, skip the chain space. Here's our chain two. We want to work on top of that. That is considered a double crochet. Chain one. So now we need a post right here. So we're going to double crochet. 
And if you made your slip stitches too tight, like I did, hold on. No. It's the perfect spot to use your four if you made your, your slip stitches too tight, which I sometimes do. And then just finish a double crochet. So now we've done all of these mesh squares that we needed across, but we need to fill in this one. So we're going to do our chain one like we normally do in between our mesh squares, but we're just going to jump over here and slip stitch to finish that to finish that mesh square. We'll do our chain two, which counts as a double crochet right here. And now we're going to yarn over and double crochet into this slip stitch right here. One and two. So now we've closed that square. Chain one, turn our work and keep working the other direction. Just like we were for all the other mesh squares. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, skip the chain, the chain space, all the way to the end. And our last one will be, and we get to go right here into our real stitch and double crochet. And that's how we're going to work that all the way up. So again, we're going to turn and do a stacked, our stacked single crochet. Chain one and continue. Continue making mesh squares. And here's our chain two. Work in the top of that and a chain, chain one. And we want to work into this first slip stitch here, or this stitch right here, to make another post. And chain one as we always do, but now we just need to close up this square, just like we did down all these other ones. All right, so there's our slip stitch. Do our chain two, yarn over, work our double crochet into the next point. So it's kind of a sideways double crochet. But we're back to our working spot, made our square, chain one, turn our work, and continue down. And in our very last one, we'll get to work into our real stitch on the side with our double crochet. And we're going to do another stacked. So turn, no chain, single crochet, and then work under the front bar with another single crochet, chain one, and continue making mesh squares. And there's our last our chain two right there, so we're going to work in the top of it. The previous row, chain one, we need to work into this spot right now to get our post ready. Double crochet, chain one as always, and now we have to make this square. So we're going to slip stitch into the next point on the next row up. Chain two, which counts as a double crochet. And then we do our double crochet sideways into the point of the next row. So we end up back over here, chain one, turn our work, and continue our mesh squares all the way to the end. Here's my last double crochet, chain one, and now we get to work into our back stitch, the top stitch of our stacked single crochets instead of working into the chain, hooray, and finish that. One more row, turn our work. Don't chain, remember, because we're going to do a stacked to keep this as unbulky as possible. So there's a single crochet, and then in the front bar, we're going to do another single crochet. So there's our skinny single crochet. Chain one, and continue our mesh squares. And we're almost done with this side. Yay! 
the top of that chain two and now do one more post one more double crochet into the next corner chain one and slip stitch into stitch the little row of three and we're done doesn't that just look awesome it's so it's all squares just like the rest your mesh squares all match and it's about the easiest way you could possibly do that now we have to do the other side we're just going to finish this off and move back down to this area so we want to make sure we start right here at this corner of our triangle not on this side we want to start at the corner of our triangle so our yarn will be lined up properly one less end to weave in so we want to get into this stitch right here fasten on our yarn and chain one so there's your chain one in between this area and right here where we're going to make our first double crochet see there's our first mesh square off of this side chain one and continue with our mesh squares and in our last one we get to go into a real stitch which is my favorite and complete our double crochet we're going to do this side exactly the same as this side until we make it up to the top now we're going to start on our very last row our very last row of filling in the side so we're going to slip stitch here chain two and do our sideways double crochet into our little little tiny piece up here that has three single crochets in it so we're going to go sideways like this so we come back to the center where we need to be chain one turn our work continue all the way to the edge with our mesh squares and there's our last one we get to turn and now you see that starting here left us totally set up and ready to go so we don't have to fasten off when we start our next row because now we need to do the rest of this all of this part Right, so now is definitely time to start working with your five again. If you needed to use your four to get into these slip stitches, that's okay. It happens to everybody. When you make a stitch too tight, oh darn. It's always doable. We can always fix it. But now I move back to my five and I'm going to do a stacked again. Stacked single crochet. So there's two on top of each other instead of a chain three. Chain one and work across so we get to our little block of three single crochets double crochet chain one skip the chain space all right and here we are that's my last one before I get to my little section of three so I did my chain one we're going to do the first stitch of our three we'll get a double crochet chain one and the last stitch we'll get a double crochet chain one and then go up to the next and continue making my squares all right and here is my very last double crochet now we've gotten back to our 25 squares across because right in here we made our last mesh stitch there were 12 on this side 12 on that side and right above our little section of three there's our 25th square so we're back to where we started when we were down here continue until you have a total of 25 there's five here this was one two three four five six seven eight and nine so five and nine is 14 so to get to 25 you want to do another 11 rows if you decided to make this nice finished edge right here with two rows of single crochet first then do 10 rows so you all of your stitch counts will match but now that we've finished that all the way up 
all the way up. I chose not to do the two single crochets on the top of this particular one. I'm going to turn it over and now you can see our lovely triangle with the mesh next to it all the way around. I'll make sure that everything matches. This back section has 25 rows this way. This one has 25 rows this way total. If you decided to do it this way, this little section of two rows of single crochet takes the place of one double crochet. So then you would only have 24. So the next thing we need to do, we have to connect these two pieces, our front piece and our back piece, with a little strip down the middle in between them like this. So that is super easy. Just single crochet. Do this with the same hook that you made the entire body with. And we are going to make a slip knot and use the same hook that you made the body with that we just made our panels with. And we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Turn our work, work in that back bump and just do single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All the way down. There's number six. That was row one of 150. So it's best to get a clicker so you can keep count, but you want 150 total. That was number one. Just like anything else, just normal old single crochet, chain one, turn your work, and single crochet all the way across. This is row two, and you need 150. All right, so here is my big strip of 150. I already attached it to the back, so I can show you how to attach it to the front, because it's the exact same thing, both directions. So they have a nice edge right here. Single crocheted this together. Now what we need to do is the same thing again. So I want to lay this on here like this. We always want to work through the mesh first and then work through our single crocheted side piece. If you chose to do the single crochets, two rows of single crochet, go through your very first single crochet just like you do here. And they will match up. Pull through, fasten on your yarn and do a single crochet in that same space through both pieces. The first single crochet, we're going to go through the mesh piece again. If you've chosen to do our two rows of single crochet, just go through the second row of your single crochets and through our side piece that we're trying to join and do a single crochet. Now the next one we're going to move over to the next mesh piece because we're always going to do two stitches through the mesh and then one in each of these single crochets. So we're going to go through the mesh, find our next stitch back here, single crochet, go through the same mesh piece again, find our next open stitch, and single crochet. Go to the next mesh piece, single crochet, same mesh, next stitch on the back, one, two, and do that all the way till we get to the corner, and I will show you what we do in the corner. All right, there we go. Now we've made it to the corner. We have to turn the corner. All right, so this was 150 all the way around. We have 25 mesh squares, 25 mesh squares, 25 mesh squares. So there's two stitches in each one. Perfect. But when you get down to the corner, this one counts on this row and it counts on this row. So we need to do a total of four stitches. So we are going to go through the next stitch on the back. There's through our mesh for the second time. Through that stitch. Through our mesh for the third time. And through the mesh for the fourth time. And that just made our corner. Now you just continue with what we were doing before. Two stitches in each mesh square and one stitch in each single crochet along the 
the side piece. And I made it to the other corner. So again, we're going to go two for this side and two for that side. So we're going to go through the mesh four times. That's one. And through the next stitch on the back, two. And there's our third time through the mesh, three. And our fourth time through the mesh. So there's our corner. Now we just finish up the other side. Exactly the same way. And here is my last mesh. So I have two stitches left. One. And go through the mesh one more time. And two. Yay! Now our bag is a bag. So if you wanted to right now, you can go all the way around a couple of times, once or twice, all the way around the top with the, just a row of single crochet all the way around to finish that edge. Or if you did it this way already, it's already a finished edge. That's why I like it that way. That's why I decided to do it that way. So all we have to do is make handles and attach them. Make a slip knot. And I'm going to use go back to my four millimeter hook because I wanted them to be nice tight stitches. I didn't want handles to be too stretchy. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five chains. Turn over and work in those back bumps. All the way down which will give us four single crochets per line. Chain one, turn our work and continue. Do that again. One, two, three, and four. So these are going to be much narrower. One, because we're using less stitches than we did here. And two, I went down to my four. So they're going to be narrower and they're going to be nice and tight. So that was one row and two rows. We want a total of 90. Total of 90. So chain one, turn your work. And do the exact same thing until you have 90 rows of single crochet for your strap. So there's one strap of 90 and make another one looks just like it, another strap of 90, preferably with long tails so that you can sew them on. Attach your handles at one, two, three, four, five, six, between the sixth and seventh, right here like this, six and seven. Make sure this is not twisted and six and seven on the other side also. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six and seven is right here. Get out your needle and attach. So you just attach. Attach them any way you want, as long as they're secure. And then move to the other side. There you go. So there's one strap. One strap done. To the other side just like it. Right, so now we have two straps all done. All you have to do is weave in the ends that are on the inside. It's not that many. Instead of a $2,500 bag, you can have yours for about $8. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon because I'm going to be making the hat. <gasps> Thanks. Bye!